So boys and girls, in this video, we end up with some major runs and paint reactions. Unfortunately, this weekend, I tried to put the Civic in Final Prime and ended up with a whole bunch of different issues. So I'm going to show you guys how I fix them and how I get this car ready for paint. And uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. As you guys can tell, I am just super excited that I got a major sag in the primer. And you can see just how excited I am. I was so excited I actually had to walk out of the garage because uh, I needed some, some fresh air. Just kidding. I was super pissed. I was not having a good day. Um, with that paint reaction and that paint sag, I was just... Yeah, my mindset wasn't wasn't there, but I ended up coming back after collecting myself and uh, thinking of a game plan of how to fix this because my plan at that time was to try to get this thing ready for paint. Um, I was actually wanting to paint uh, the next following day, but because of all these issues, I ended up having to postpone uh, paint and clear unfortunately. So once the primer ended up uh, flashing off and uh, I noticed that the primer was uh, somewhat fully dry, I started to sand the areas uh, where I had some problems. And here I ended up just sanding out some of the dirt nibs and things of that nature. Um, but as I started to go along, I noticed that some areas were still wet, um, especially where I got that sag or that run. So I ended up stopping and just letting the primer end up uh, drying overnight. Uh, and then I went ahead and continued on. So moving forward to the next day, after the primer was nice and dry, I went ahead and grabbed my block with some um, sandpaper and started to sand out our run or our sag. I, I'm going to just call it a sag um, because basically that's what it is. Um, and I ended up noticing why I got a sag was, for one, I was spraying way too heavy. What I ended up noticing was that my gun wasn't properly adjusted. And, uh, well, it was uh, open up all the way, basically. And the reason for that was because I previously had um, set up my gun, but unfortunately, I had some problems. So I ended up tearing it down part, cleaning it out and putting it back together and then go and shoot paint or primer at that time. But unfortunately, I forgot to readjust the gun and this is why I ended up with some paint sags and spraying that primer way too heavy. I'm actually quite thankful that I got a sag and also a paint reaction because I noticed my body line wasn't quite straight. I ended up noticing a dent that was still on the body line that I had previously tried to fix. And unfortunately, it was still pretty noticeable. So what I end up doing is grabbing my DA and knocking it all down, removing all the primer, all the body filler, and getting it back to bare metal. At this point, you could see where the dent was and also a little bit of the mapping of some self etch. Now this is actually going to cause a reaction later on, but for now, we're just showing you what we have to work with. So this is a stud gun. Many of you guys probably are familiar with what a stud gun is, but if you're not, it's one of these gigantic things. This is just from Harbor Freight. And here are some studs that actually come with the stud gun. So we're going to end up using a stud gun to remove that dent. And uh, that's why we got it back down to bare metal. So you basically just feed a stud into the stud gun put it onto the surface of where you want to pull. In this case, it's gonna be this dent right near this body line. And you go ahead and push the stud gun in until it shortens out to the body and then push the button and it welds a stud. Pretty simple and it's uh, pretty quick as well. So the next step in the process was grabbing my sliding hammer and begin to pull on that stud and pulling that dent out. Now this is gonna take several tries to try to get that dent out. And you guys will actually see what ends up happening um, to the metal. I didn't realize that these this metal on this car is super thin. So I ended up burning some holes uh, when I tried to remove one of the studs or a couple of the studs actually, and ended up with a couple holes in the body, unfortunately. So. 
Uh, anyways, moving on, we're going to go ahead and pull a little bit on that dent because I did notice that um, the body still was kind of pulling out as I was pulling that dent out. Um, so what I ended up doing is kind of just sliding hammering that uh, body line and then going ahead and knocking down um, the surrounding areas to get that body line to be um, higher than the other areas because I noticed that um, as I was pulling everything was kind of pulling together and not really um, the high spots where I wanted him so I ended up just hammering down those areas um, to get a more defined body line. After doing some pulling and hammering down the um, the high areas I went ahead and used my DA to kind of just uh, get a smooth surface again. I believe this is 80 grit that I'm using here. And then I uh, work up to um, 180 grit just to kind of smoothen that, that metal out and those, uh, those areas that, that we pulled. And also feeling and make sure that that metal is nice and straight. Now I'm trying to be careful and not go over the body line too much um, because you can start to lose your body line as you start to remove some material. So just going to make sure that uh, we don't lose our body line and yeah let's just uh, keep working here. So I ended up putting some um, guide coat on this metal area and you can actually see uh, some of the low spots um, where we ended up pulling and I also went ahead and grinded down some of that stud. You can actually see some of the hammer marks as well. Um, so you can see that it's uh, not perfect at this at this point. Um, but we will get it uh, much closer um, as we move on. So let's go ahead and move on. I ended up sanding out those areas to try to get a better idea of what's low and what's high. And like I said, I did put some uh, black guide coat so you can kind of see that that black area is all a low area as well. So um, that kind of just helps us identify um, if it's a low area or if it's a high area. So since we needed to do a little bit more pulling, I ended up using um, some more uh, studs. And then once I cut them off, I actually used this little belt sander to kind of uh, cut down those areas that have metal on them from that stud and kind of get them back down to, um, to level out the surface. And then go ahead and use my DA to kind of further um, refine that area. So as you guys see, as we have been pulling, we're still not there. You could actually still see some light um, where we have it in the, in the low areas on that body line. So we're going to have to end up pulling a little bit more. So I ended up pulling a bit more and you could actually see um, I ended up with some holes. So what I ended up doing was welding some studs on those holes and filling in those holes and then I'd grind them down um, and then it would leave kind of like these um, filled in holes. Uh, with the studs. So that ended up working out really, really well. Next step was body filler and also glaze, as well as some dry guide coat to kind of help us identify some um, additional low spots. And it was kind of nice that um, it highlighted some hammer marks um, from my picking hammer. So I ended up using some glaze to kind of fill in those little small uh, imperfections and uh, we're going to go ahead and add some here in a couple areas as well to try to get it nice and flat um, so let's go ahead and add some glaze applying body filler is pretty straightforward just make sure that your surface is clean and go ahead and start to apply the body filler um, the main thing is putting it on first and then refining um, your body filler to try to make it a nice and clean surface um, to work with and then go ahead and grab a block once it's fully dry and start blocking it out and getting it nice and smooth feathering out those edges um, in this case I'm using I believe I'm using 180 grit um, because this is glaze it's a lot thinner than um, body filler so it's a little bit more easier to uh, to sand so I ended up using 180 just to um, get it down and refine it a little bit more because I am going to go over this with 320 and get it nice and smooth. The next step in my process, I'm going to go ahead and use some ChemSolve, um, which is basically just a um, PrepSol cleaner 
um, I go ahead and clean the surface and then use it almost like a wet check and go ahead and look and see what we have. I don't use water because there is some bare metal there and you don't want it to rust. So I use this as a wet check to kind of make sure that my body line and my body work is nice and straight. Um, and if there is some imperfections, I go ahead and kind of just refine it a little bit with the DA or a block, um, depending what you're com more comfortable with and making sure that um, you have it nice and level. Um, I also went ahead and cleaned up some areas that I saw some um, sanding, scr sanding scratches. So I just go ahead and refine those with the DA really quick. And then um, I ended up, um, I believe I ended up putting a little bit more uh, body glaze on top of that just to kind of refine a little bit of that area and also a little bit on the edge. Alrighty guys, so we are back in the garage today. We are ready to shoot the final primer on the Honda Civic after fixing the runt and a small dent that was on the uh, quarter panel on this area right here. I went ahead and put some self-etch on all the bare metal and also took care of the run by sanding it all out. So now we're ready for final prime. I'm not gonna actually shoot the jams. The jam doesn't need any more primer. I'm just really focusing on basically the quarter and the uh, top, oh, sorry, top portion, top portion of the, uh, of the body of the car. So uh, I think I'm ready. If you guys are ready, let's go. So at this point, we are ready for final prime. I went ahead and took care of all those um, bodywork problems as well as that uh, that sag that we had. So now it's time for final prime. And what I'm hoping is going to go really well um, ends up not working out so well. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and shoot this final prime. Now, with my settings, um, the, this is my Tecna primer gun with a 1.8, and I'm shooting some primer surfacer from Eurocam. I have my fluid turned out at two and a half turns, and I'm spraying at about, I want to say, 30 PSI or so, and uh, putting down a uh, wet coat, what I would consider it probably a medium wet coat of primer and everything is going well it's spraying nice and smooth i'm getting a nice um, uh, wet uh, uh, medium wet coverage of primer and uh, everything is just looking super good and uh, i mean honestly it's just spraying really well so um, let's go ahead and move forward and see what ends up happening um, and what type of paint reaction we end up getting So this is what the primer job is looking like. After I went ahead and sprayed it, I grabbed my camera and kind of just started recording. And uh, it, for the most part, the primer is looking super nice and smooth. I'm not seeing any issues at this point. Everything is just looking great. And uh, I was just like star studded at how well that primer was laying down. And uh, yeah, I was just super excited. I didn't see any paint reactions at this point and everything was just looking super nice and smooth and i was i was getting more and more excited i didn't see any more paint runs in this area and uh our body line is looking pretty nice and straight and uh yeah i'm pretty excited at this point of how everything is uh pretty much turning out yeah we did have a couple of dust nibs here and there but for the most part everything was nice and uh nice and smooth until the primer started flashing off and we start noticing uh well some mapping some edge mapping and uh some kind of like these cracks almost like looks like cracks or what they call crazing in the primer and uh it almost looked like there's a run there uh and that's just because well we got uh some paint reactions in the primer and uh Everything else seemed to be well. It was just this area where we did the body work that it ended up looking kind of funky, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, everything else just seemed nice. Like we did have a couple areas here and there where we took care of that, um, where we took care of that run. And uh, I'm just not sure what was happening. There was also an area up here on top that uh, was bare metal. I put some self-etch 
and lo and behold it ended up reacting so in my best guess is that uh, well this stuff is just reacting with our self etch um, because you have a difference of 2k and 1k uh, anytime you put 2k over 1k um, especially um, wet or heavy uh, it ends up reacting this way and uh, well you do have a potential of getting some uh, reactions um, so how do we end up fixing this well well again we're gonna have to let this thing dry ended up sanding it out and then um, hopefully uh, grab our self etch and pretty much this is the one i'm using the duplicolor self etch um, so i ended up grabbing this and throwing it straight in the trash because this thing is junk honestly i've had more problems with this self etch than any other self etch i've ever used so uh, this is going to be the last time i ever use it because of all the problems so i ended up grabbing a block with some sandpaper and ended up sanding out um, some of that reaction on the top part of the door and um, the area on the quarter panel wasn't fully dry yet um, the top part was but the bottom wasn't still so i ended up giving a little bit more time uh, for that to dry out and then um, go ahead and try to fix that area as well so because we are painting at night, the temperature started to drop down to the point where the primer was having a hard time fully drying. So I ended up grabbing uh, one of my heat guns and start to kind of help the primer dry a little bit. So I ended up just um, getting that area to dry by warming up the panel and then letting it cool down on its own and kind of helping that primer uh, dry out. And um, because, well, in my garage was probably about 50 or 60 degrees where this primer usually dries pretty quickly at around 70 or 80. And so, yeah, I wasn't really, um, it wasn't working in my favor. So uh, after I got it nice and dry, I ended up grabbing the block with some sandpaper and ended up starting to sand our paint reacted areas. Um, so that's going to be part of the quarter panel and uh, a couple other areas as well um, where we had those paint reactions and trying to um, get those things to smoothen out and then um, try to apply some more primer on top. After sanding the paint reacted areas, I go ahead and grab a clean cloth and clean off all the areas, basically all the dust uh, from sanding the primer. Go ahead and clean all of that off. I clean it twice one will be dry and the next will be with wax and grease remover or a very light coat of wax and grease remover um, and then let that dry and then what i end up doing is adjusting my gun to barely spray any amount of primer and just shoot what i call a dust coat so what i'm doing is i'm dusting uh, primer over those paint reacted areas to sort of create a barrier and i've done this quite a few times so i know it works so I ended up just dusting it on in those areas and uh, letting that dry. Then once that um, dusted coat is dry, I go ahead and grab my spray gun and readjust to uh, get a basically a medium coat of primer. So I start from the bottom and work my way up. And this is, like I said, a medium wet coat. It's not a super heavy coat. I'm moving a bit quicker than I normally would um, just so that it applies uh, a little bit lighter. Um, I did notice that my pressure was a little low, so I ended up bumping it up just a little bit and continuing on with uh, applying a nice medium wet coat of primer on the remaining uh, of the car, basically. So uh, the entire quarter panel at this point. So I'm finally at what I thought was going to be my last coat of primer and uh, I thought everything was going smooth. At this point, everything was going smooth. Um, of course, we had a little bit of paint reactions and stuff, but after putting down that, um, that, that dust coat and then following it up with a medium wet coat, I didn't see any more paint reactions. So I said, awesome, 
let me just go ahead and uh, spray some primer like I normally would and uh, and call it a day. Well, when I started to spray, um, I started to notice that the gun wasn't quite spraying right. I started to notice a little bit of the primer kind of being a little bit chunky, to be honest. And it almost seemed like the pressure of the gun was low. So I ended up rechecking my pressure and checking my volume. Maybe something, um, you know, was uh, misadjusted or something. But uh, it ended up spraying pretty chunky. So what I think was ended up happening was... Um, the primer was drying in the cup. At least that's what I figured at the moment. So I said, all right, well, maybe maybe just uh, mix up another batch of primer and uh, that'll take care of that. So that's what I end up doing is going over there and, um, and mixing up another batch. So I finally got my other batch of primer, shaking it up, making sure that that primer is not stagnant and it's not drying up. Um, like I said, this was a fresh batch, so um, there was no dried up primer or anything like that. Um, I didn't in really see any issues with the gun. I took the cap off and everything, and everything seemed to be ch checking out. But as I started spraying this uh, next coat, I stopped about this area here and started to, to check my gun again and seeing, hey, maybe there's a problem with the cap. Maybe there's a cap with, uh, maybe there's a problem with the gun itself. Um, because I noticed, I was like, this doesn't seem right. So I uh, ended up having some some more issues um, laying down this primer. And what ended up happening was, well, I just ended up continuing on and um, applying my primer basically chunky at this point because I needed some build at this point. We only had two, pretty much two full coats at this point, and we needed a third. So I said, well, if it's chunky, oh, well. It's going to go on here and uh, we'll just be able to sand it out. Luckily, it's just the primer stage anyway. So uh, I ended up continuing on and spraying um, some more primer in this area. So I end up just uh, spraying on and continuing on. So after spraying my primer all chunky, you could see pretty much what it ended up laying out. This is normally not how I lay down my primer, um, but I did need a third coat. And at this point, I just said, you know what? I need that build more than I need a flat finish. So I ended up just kind of spraying uh, the primer in basically the areas where I knew I needed to sand. And uh, you could see how chunky um, that primer ended up laying out. Now this is primer, so you are going to sand it. So I wasn't too worried with it. I was more worried about having uh, the appropriate amount of build in the primer and enough to uh, be able to sand out um, some imperfections, if any, uh, were, were there. So, um, like I said, I just said, you know what, screw it. Let's go ahead and put in the last coat and, uh, we'll worry, worry about the consequences later. So, um, like I said, we could always sand it out. It is primer. So, um, that was my mindset at that time. Well, unfortunately boys, I just, uh, I'm calling it quits for tonight. There's so many issues that I'm running into and uh let's talk about a couple of them <clears throat> so on my last coat of primer uh i felt like the primer was probably drying in the cup and when i went to go shoot it it was really really dry so i was like you know what i think the primer is drying so i went and mixed up another batch i go to spray same thing it's really really dry spray and uh it felt like the gun was really really slow so I think something is wrong with uh, my primer gun. I try to clean it out, go to spray again, same thing. So there might be a problem with my air system. Um, I don't think I'm getting enough air. So I'm gonna check my filters. Maybe they're plugged up or something and causing it to not be able to spray right. Um, we also got a paint reaction. Um, I'm probably going to narrate a lot of this video. So a lot of it's gonna be narrated, but um, I ended up getting a paint reaction uh, with the quarter panel as well. But luckily for that, we were able to fix it. Let me show you the uh, results here. So we ended up getting a paint reaction in this area. And as you guys can see, we got no paint reaction whatsoever. Oh, I think I might've touched it a little bit. I think it's still, still drying. But uh, yeah, we ended up getting a major paint reaction in this area and in this area down here as well. But as you guys can see, it's all taken care of. We also got a small paint reaction here. 
gotten taken care of. And then we also got a paint reaction here. Now the primer actually laid down real, real nice and smooth right here. You guys can see that. But if you guys look down here, it's looking a little rough. I think you guys can tell it looks a little rough and that's because while well, the gun was dry spraying really, really badly. And um, yeah, so by the time I really noticed because my lighting is really, really bad, um, I wasn't really able to tell until about where that uh, gas cover is. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, unfortunate that we're having so many issues with the primer stage on this. But luckily, it's just primer. Um, so we are going to have to sand, sand all of this out anyway. So yeah, all of this is going to get sanded smooth. And then uh, we are going to be shooting uh, base and clear tomorrow. So I'm going to have to take care of some of the issues with my air system. I'm going to go ahead and check my filter tonight. Make sure everything is good in here. And then um, also I have a filter on my spray gun as well. Down here on my regulator. So we're going to check that one. Make sure we're, we're not uh, plugged up there. And uh, yeah, we should still be good. So um yeah so anyway guys that's all i have for you guys today hopefully we're able to shoot some base and clear maybe tomorrow uh by the latest hopefully um if not it'll have to be the following week we'll just see how everything is going i am trying to hurry up and finish this project i really want to shoot it tomorrow because um, i have tomorrow off and it would be great if i could just actually shoot this car tomorrow because it is Memorial Day tomorrow. So um, that would be awesome. That would be ideal, but I don't know if that's actually gonna end up happening just because of so many issues that we actually had uh, with the primer and the reaction. And then also some of the body work wasn't right. Um, and then another reaction. So yeah, so we're gonna end up seeing if I can shoot some base and clear on this thing. But so after running into all those issues, although it was dry sprayed a little bit, the primer actually lay down pretty nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and work on it the next night. Alrighty guys, so we got the Civic unwrapped. This is the next day after the primer job. We gotta pull it outside because I really gotta look at this thing and see if that paint reaction is gone. Because if it's still visible, well, we could end up with a problem when we go to spray it. So I really gotta look at this thing outside. So let's go ahead and pull it out, see what it looks like, and see if there's something we can do to fix this car, if it is bad, or is it okay to shoot base and clear? Because I plan on shooting base and clear tonight. If possible, today's my day off. I'm off on Memorial Day. So what better to take advantage of Memorial Day being off and being able to spray the car tonight. So let's see. Let's pull the car outside and let's see if this car is, well, ready for paint. All right, so we have the Civic outside. I'm really looking into this area right here. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but you do have a little bit of edge mapping. Right where we had some self-edge. 
and we put a little bit of that 2k kind of see some area right there I'm not sure if if you get up close you can't really tell because of the texture of the primer but in the Sun you can kind of see kind of have that weird texture or that weird uh, mapping of where that bodywork was here on this run over here got a little bit of fingerprints and stuff like that but not really anything noticeable uh, we do have a little bit of the, some sanding scratch uh, but I imagine oh I imagine that's probably going to be able to be uh, sanded out as far as the rest of the car goes looks really really nice I don't see any other defect I did have a large dent right here and uh, I'm not seeing anything right there other than some fingerprints so that looks really really good so I don't know I'm kind of hoping for the best here so at this point I'm starting to wet sand the car trying to get rid of all that rough primer and also sanding some of that paint reacted area and trying to get it nice and level and uh, seeing if it shows through the paint or uh, through the primer or if it's something that um, I should kind of just go back and respray. Um, I'm also checking for any uh, remaining dents that might be uh, on the, the quarter panel so you guys could see basically what it looks like at this point. It's looking like almost like a piece of glass at this point. So I think the body work came out pretty damn good um, considering and uh, all the considering all the problems that we had uh, with the the primer stage and and the body work and the self etch and all that I think it actually came out really really good and uh, I ended up flipping flipping the car onto the shaded area which it actually ends up looking brighter but that's because we do have it facing away from the sun and it actually becomes more reflective like that so you're actually able to see um, a little bit more of your body work and also the body lines and uh, kind of get a more general idea of uh, what your paint is going to look like with clear on it. So as you guys might notice there, um, pretty, pretty nice and smooth. I mean, I'm not really seeing any problems with the bodywork. Even the paint reacted areas seem to have disappeared with the sanding. So at this point, I'm going to let this thing sit for a few days and see if uh, any paint reacted areas actually come back before I spray some uh, base and clear um, just to kind of uh, make sure that that uh, reacted area doesn't come back because if it does um, well at least it's still in the primer stage and not necessarily the base and clear so I'm going to end up holding off um, painting that base and clear um, at least for a couple of days and seeing uh, if, if anything uh, ends up popping up within the, that time period. So, uh, And regardless to that, um, I didn't end up having any reducer for uh, the Uricam paint line, unfortunately. And because I've been dealing with all those paint reactions, I didn't want to use any, just any reducer. Um, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and order some reducer and uh, get it shipped to my house and because I don't want to deal with any more paint reactions so at this point I'm kind of just making sure that the body is nice and straight and uh, I did find a couple of sanding scratches that uh, I was able to level out um, here right above that gas door and right behind the quarter glass right in this little area right here I could actually see a little bit of the um, sanding scratches right there um, so I end up pretty much just grabbing some sandpaper and leveling off that area. So after leveling off those, a little bit of those sanding scratches with some sandpaper, um, pretty much these are going to be the final results. And you can see uh, just how smooth that area looks now. And uh, well, this is pretty much going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys really enjoyed watching me suffer through this whole final prime process. Um, like I said, I'm kind of glad that I got um, some of the paint reactions that I did because it let me further perfect the car and uh, check for any other defects and check all my body work and my body lines. And of course, we want the best possible result. This is a garage paint job after all, but that doesn't mean that we don't want it to look good. So obviously, I want this thing to look really, really nice. So 
I want to take the time and uh, do as much of the body work as I can and try to get this car nice and straight and have one of the cleanest EM1s out there on the street, at least in my area. Um, and uh, I think with uh, going back over those paint reacted areas and some of those uh, body work and that body line, um, I think we're going to achieve a really, really good result uh, when we shoot some base and clear on this thing. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Stay spraying, stay wrenching, and we will catch you guys on the next video. I'm out. Peace.